Do I regret my top surgery? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Corin, also known as the Kitten Choreographer. My pronouns are he, they, and I'm a teen with a passion for animal rescue and, in particular, kitten rescue. However, today's video is not going to be about kitten rescue. This video is actually going to be all about my top surgery. But first, let's do a quick introduction to me if you are new here. I am transmasculine, and I do identify as non-binary, but I do present as a man to strangers. I don't usually introduce myself as non-binary, I, I don't really let people know that unless they're in my life. I don't really let people know I'm non-binary unless I know I'm going to be seeing them more than once and I would consider them, like, a friend. Like I mentioned in my intro, my pronouns are he, they, and I don't have a preference on which ones people use for me. I will link below my first video about my top surgery because this is a one year update to my top surgery. I will link that video below because it goes more into depth about the actual surgery and what recovery is like. This video is going to be more of a reflection on my top surgery, so if you want to see that first video, I will link it below and put it in the cards. Um, so it should pop up on one of these sides of the screen any second now. <laughs> So let's just do a bit of an overall recap for my top surgery. I did get my top surgery November 1st of 2022. So it has been a little bit over a year there because I didn't really consider making this video until now or get around to it or anything like that. I did get top surgery when I was 17. I am 18 now, but I did get my top surgery as a minor. I was very lucky to make it in to get surgery right before those laws passed that prevent minors from getting the gender-affirming health care that they need, um, because that did go into effect in 2023. So I was lucky because I am in a state, I'm in the South, in Kentucky, and we do have laws that prevent kids from getting their necessary medical care when it comes to being trans, um, unfortunately. And another quick note I do want to mention is that my insurance didn't cover top surgery for me. My parents did pay out of pocket, and I am very thankful and grateful that we were able to do that, and that I have supportive parents that were willing to do that for me. Now, let's kind of get talking about recovery because I know I filmed my first video six weeks post-op, so I was able to give some talk about my initial recovery, but I can give a little bit more now about my extended recovery because it's been over a year now. So I was very thankful to have a very smooth recovery. I didn't have any major complications. I recovered well, um, which is very good because one of the things I was very nervous about going into my surgery was that I would have complications with my recovery process. I had one very minor problem when it came to my recovery and that was just some of the scars bumped up a little bit and became a little red. I went into my doctor a couple of times and got a steroid injection there and that um, brought the swelling. I don't even know if you would call it swelling but that brought the bumps down um, back to normal scar tissue. And I am fully recovered now, so that recovery section wasn't long at all. I did go more into detail about my recovery and the pain in that first video again, so I would recommend that video more than this one for what the recovery is like. But this main video, the main purpose for making this video is going to be about do I regret my top surgery? It's been a year, I'm an adult now. I know people that are looking into top surgery wonder if people regret it. And also, people that are just learning about it in general wonder that, so I thought I would answer that question in today's video. Of course, I cannot answer for every trans person out there, um, or every person that gets top surgery out there. I can only answer for myself, so this video is just a personal experience. Do I regret my top surgery? The answer is no. 100% no. 
I am so glad that I was able to get my surgery. I don't regret it at all, and I'm very thankful and grateful that I was able to get it as soon as I did. I had horrible, terrible dysphoria before my top surgery, and this dysphoria negatively impacted my everyday life on so many levels. And after that surgery, that dysphoria has completely gone away from me. I am able to do so much now that I was not able to do before my surgery, because I no longer have to worry about that uncomfortable dysphoria feeling, and also those uncomfortable binders, which binders are a wonderful tool for uh, trans mask people and trans men, but they are uncomfortable. They were especially uncomfortable for me as I had rather large, um, you know, attachments. And binders were very uncomfortable for me. I could not wear them more than like six hours and I didn't want to go out if I wasn't wearing a binder. So I would not do a lot of things because I had to wear a binder. And I also could not swim. I did not swim because or I rarely swim. I skipped out on beach trips, but I didn't swim for a couple years there. And other activities I just could not do because of dysphoria. But since top surgery, I've been able to do all that again. I went to the beach um, summer 2023, and it was so amazing to be able to swim and enjoy myself in public. Um, without having to worry about that dysphoria. I did still have to wear a swim top for that trip because you cannot expose your scars to the sunlight, direct sunlight, for like a year after your surgery, so I still had to wear a swim top, but that dysphoria was still not there and it was amazing. But I have had my chance to go topless swimming because my family did install a pool this past fall, um, and so I was able to swim some um, at night when the sun wasn't shining down, so I night swam a lot, and I also have a hot tub, so I'm able to go outside and not have to worry about dysphoria because I can go topless. And honestly, sometimes I forget that I ever had, like, the need for top surgery at all. Like, sometimes I forget that I got it, that I wasn't just born with a flat chest. It It's just so comfortable for me to be able to live life without that dysphoria, that it, it just feels right. Um, but when I do think about my previous dysphoria, I do just get so happy that I was able to have that surgery and truly come into myself through that. And it makes me so happy that I don't have to deal with that dysphoria anymore. Getting top surgery really was so, so amazing for me. And it's shown me really how necessary it is for so many trans people. Taking away gender affirming surgeries and healthcare from trans people is so dangerous. And by taking away that gender affirming care, people are taking away something that is medically necessary for trans people. It is not just a cosmetic surgery that, you know, trans people want done to look prettier or something like that. We need it done for our mental health. It is necessary. So I really hope that, like, the world can improve and that trans people, especially trans youth, can start receiving the care that they need again. And I will forever fight for people to be as lucky as I was so they can get the gender-affirming care that they need. But yes, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe for more kitten-related and sometimes other related content. I upload on Sundays and on Wednesdays if I can, and if I can't, then I do upload whenever I'm able to. Also, please make sure to leave any thoughts or questions that you have in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching again, and goodbye!